I just woke up and I heard one of the most magnificent things <laughs> where we're at right now. We go to the bathroom in like an outdoor bathroom. The doors open all the time and there's a huge gecko that lives in there. So I was just going to the bathroom. I haven't seen him yet, but I heard him and I've never heard a gecko call before. It was incredible. I was so excited that I heard the gecko call. I can't go back to sleep. So I decided to come out here and watch the sunrise and there's so much going on. And Osprey just flew over and there are tarpons rolling, rolling around the water. Sites like this where the beauty of nature is silhouetted against human-made structures and the sounds of engines drown out bird calls, where the pillars are connected with cables and the seaweed on shore is sprinkled with plastic, well, it does make me quite sad. But I also recognize that I am a part of it. It's very difficult not to be. And while I usually prefer to be tucked away in natural spaces where the impact from humans isn't so blatant, I also know that hiding from it doesn't mean that it's not here. So here I find myself on a beautiful chain of islands that we call the Florida Keys. This diverse ecosystem includes one of the world's largest seagrass beds and is home to the only living coral barrier reef in the continental United States. Just like with any destination I find myself traveling to, my hope is to learn from and connect with my surroundings, and especially to soak in every experience with the nature that, as of right now, feels quite unfamiliar to me. Good morning, sweet girl. Noah! I heard the gecko. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Chris just took the dogs for a run. We've been running in the mornings pretty consistently, but after watching the sunrise, I just wanted to come back and make coffee and settle in for some work. So that's what I'm doing. The van is in Florida with me, obviously, but we can't live in the van while we are down here because it's hot and the dogs need AC, which brings me to the trailer. Noah works and lives down here, so he has his trailer with him. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Noah and I built out a cargo trailer. The trailer has AC, so that is where we are spending our time and sleeping. Spending that time to build out this trailer with Noah and now getting to live in it for two to three weeks just feels really special and the dogs love it and it's very comfortable and it's very open and he did a wonderful job, so that's pretty cool. But the reason I'm in the van right now is because I have been obsessed with quick pickles and I have both mushrooms and cucumber that I want to pickle. So I'm coming to grab my spices and vinegar and I'm going to make quick pickles. A little trailer here, Togo is parked in front of the trailer. Here is our beautiful outdoor space and then Noah and Bree live on this boat. Chris is fishing right now. And this is our bathroom and where the gecko lives. Bree's home! <laughs> It has been very hot. So basically the moment, once I got into Florida, I was like, I need these pickles. All right, I'm starting with fresh dill in my jars. Here's a little trick that you can do with dill to kind of release all the good stuff. Just 
take your mason jar and kind of break it up a little bit on your cutting board. So I'm sure for all of you, it's kind of a shock to see us in Florida and fishing salt water and wearing t-shirts and not winter garb. But I will say it feels really, really good to be down here. I didn't see Noah all fall and winter, so it's really nice to be with Noah and Bree. And just to be out of winter feels amazing. Red pepper flakes. We're gonna make these spicy. I am extra excited to show you guys this little garlic crusher that I have. It has made my life so much easier. You can also use, like, use it for ginger or nuts or whatever really you wanna crush. So with this, you just place your garlic cloves in here and you just grind them up. Garlic going into the jars. I'm doing like three cloves in each. I'm sharing these details because you guys are going to want to do this at home. So last night, Chris and me and Noah went, um, well, we went night fishing for our first time, basically. We were out for sunset and decided to bring poles and fished for a while. And I ended up throwing in my last cast and pulled up a uh, mutton snapper, which I've never caught before. They're the most beautiful fish. I'll put some clips in here of our time. So we all had some late night snapper tacos. We came back with the snapper and I filleted it up and grilled it quick and it was a wonderful night. It made me so grateful for everything that we have access to here. So the hope is to continue doing that. Hopefully catching dinner most days of the week. Now I'm adding some full peppercorns. And lastly, I'm crushing up a single bay leaf in each of the jars. Apparently this is supposed to help with the crispiness. So now I do it. And I think it does help. All right, this jar is packed. Okay, that'll be good for now. When the brine goes in here, I'll be able to squish these down. And... Okay, for the brine, I just have water. I'm going to add vinegar, maybe like a cup or two. I try to keep it around a one-to-one -one solution and a few teaspoons of salt. Now I heat this brine up until all of the salt is dissolved and pour it over our pickles and our mushrooms, throw a lid on, put it in the fridge, and they'll be delicious starting like tomorrow. So since leaving the Northwoods, I've wanted to continue reading every day whether it's just to learn something about the area or the book that I'm reading right now. And it has been so hard for me to maintain that, I mean, discipline really. It's really all on me. I know that we're probably gonna go out fishing tonight, try to catch dinner. I'm gonna do it right now. Make a snapper have to be, babe. Ten. Ten. And a public trying to cut me off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We found a sea bean. That is so cool. Yeah, it's like a seed from a plant. It could be from a different country. I don't know what kind this is. I'll have to look it up. This is a Makuna sea bean. The ocean current can carry and disperse these seeds all over the world. And this particular sea bean came from a climbing plant that originates in South America. Drop anchor here. In just the few days that I have fished the saltwater, I've learned that the tides aren't as predictable as I assumed they would be, and that permit like feeding on the crabs that hide in the floating sargasm. I've learned that I will always be excited about a jellyfish, and that tarpon look like little dinosaurs in the water. I've learned that snapper have these cute little fangs that almost look like canines, but pinfish have these strange human-like teeth that help them crush and grind up their food. Oh, big sea turtle. <gasps> Where? It was just right there.
So the sun is set and we're starting to see just a lot of action. There's a lot of sea turtles around us that have been popping up for air. Um, there have been multiple tarpon rolling over right next to this edge of sargasm. We think we might have just seen a permit come up and surface like 15 feet from the boat. We saw a big school of jacks come through, but we haven't caught anything yet. So hopefully the real action starts now. It's so beautiful. All right, Noah. Holy shit, Noah. Oh, that's gonna just run you right. Oh, yes. <laughs> nice. Yay, we didn't run on the line, that's great. A lot of it though. Oh, yeah. there's a tarpon right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. It's like. It's like. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like reeling in a log that has fins. <laughs> so, Terry and Neil have wow. been moon pies. That's a pretty decent size. Wow, look at that. Oh, he's so pretty. So pretty. Moon pies? Well, yeah, but it's a look. Did you want to look at him, Chris? That's a beautiful fish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see it. Wow. <laughs> so beautiful out there. Oh, there's a hermit crab over there. Oh, really? Oh, there. right here, too. Here's one. This guy's just walking around. Come on, buddy. Kila, watch out. Kila, leave it. There, bud. Oh, my goodness. He's just walking around on the deck? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's, is this a really big guy? Wow. Wow. It's so crazy. Bye, buddy. Good morning. Oh. How oh, foggy. I feel foggy. Just like that. <laughs> we just got done working out. The camera's all fogged up because of the heat. We're dripping sweat. Well, I might just have to wait this guy out. I could literally wring out my shirt right now. I know. It is crazy with just getting used to this humidity. We've been sweating so much, but it actually feels really good. But along with that, we have a lot of dirty clothes. I've been here for about a week now. So, this morning we're going to do laundry. And this might sound silly, but I am so excited to go to a laundromat. Some of my favorite days on the road have been when I needed to go in town and do laundry and I tend to just make like a day out of it so I am really excited to have a laundry day. All right, everybody, laundry is done. Laundry is put away. I spent the rest of the afternoon working. I was actually finishing up all the details for the sourdough bread recipe video that I published a few days before this one. For this evening, Chris and I are gonna take out kayaks and we're gonna try once again to catch dinner because I would love to throw some meat on my salad and hopefully it will be another beautiful sunset. I'm also so excited to explore these mangroves because this is the first time this trip that I have gone into the mangroves and explored the tunnels. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. Cruising. So we got set up with these paddle kayaks 
If I lived on water, I would 100% get one of these. So Noah is grabbing us some headlamps so we can be safe in the mangroves. There are crocodiles back there and sharks as well. But I'm not really worried about those. I want to see them. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that's a mahara, I think. Nice job. A common sight here in the mangroves is to see very large and beautiful sunbathing iguanas. Now I have a soft spot for reptiles and amphibians, but I bring this up because green iguanas are invasive. Every ecosystem has native wildlife that has evolved over time to support and thrive and serve a purpose in that very specific environment. So when invasive species are introduced, the native wildlife is effortlessly outcompeted and the balance of that ecosystem can quickly be compromised. Just caught my first fish of the evening. In short, iguanas compete with native wildlife for food and shelter. They also threaten other endangered species like tree snails and the Miami blue butterfly. It is highly encouraged to hunt them and I've heard that they taste like chicken. So I just caught a grunt and these are very common. Uh, so common that the limit per day is 100. <laughs> and I just think they're the most beautiful fish. So this is a grunt. It's getting dark, which is so cool because the like nighttime insects are really starting to get loud. I'm hoping that you guys can hear them. And the tide is getting really strong now, so the tide is being pulled out away from the mangroves. And visibility is getting better, even though it's getting darker. I just realized that I wasn't recording and I told you guys the whole story. Yeah, they were moving that way. So I just um, decided it's- Let me try one more shrimp. Okay. Um, I just decided- Okay, sounds good. Good luck. Okay, so I just put my headlamp on because I've heard that some- Oh, shit. Maybe that was one, babe. Are you serious? Yeah. Did it just get your your bait? He bent the hook. He bent the hook? He bent the hook. Okay, so I just put my headlamp on and looked down into the water and there was a school of like five fish, at least 24 inches each, and I could see their eyes glow red under the water. I've never seen that before. I've never Get experienced that. Hook. Oh, f I'm getting a bite. Oh my God, they're coming. I see their eyes. This is so fucking cool. I lost him, yeah. He said, just remember that the crocodiles hunt at night and their eyes also glow red. So, um, yeah. Oh, wow. Nice job. Well, we can't eat those, but really good catch. Bye, little tarpon. Oh my. All right, I just caught a tarpon. Yeah. Cool looking fish. All right, buddy. All right, hold on, hold on. Yeah, dude, this is crazy. This is amazing. Oh, I'm going with the tide. You might have to cruise a bit. Little babies. I wouldn't mind seeing a, a uh, crocodile. I think that'd be kind of cool. Nice fish. They're so up. shiny. I know, they, they look like little dinosaurs. Ah. Nice. Open. Good catch, babe. Thanks. That was so cool. Are you having fun? Absolutely. How about you? <laughs> yeah. All right. I want to get away from the edges of these mangroves just in case. Just in case what? Just in case it's a crocodile. <laughs> look at this beautiful bird. Hi, buddy. Oh, you're so pretty. Hey, beautiful bird. Get him? Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, right under me are horseshoe crabs that are mating. How freaking cool is that? Wow. How neat. 
So now we're heading back through the tunnel that we came in. And I'm so excited to check out this nightlife. Oh, that looks like maybe some sort of like egg sack. Bunch of red eyes here. A lot of tarpon moving through. I have learned that I love fishing at night. I think it actually has less to do with the fishing and more to do with just being out there and observing what comes to life when the sun goes to sleep. It's so new to me and fascinating and thrilling and I'm really excited to share more of it with you all next week. So, Akil and I will see you then. Your face looks amazing. Especially with those curls, you know. Right? <laughs> what you doing, babe? <laughs> Eat my stuff in there while my laundry is. I almost said while my laundry is cooking. Okay, I have got to figure out this. <sighs> like, why can I just not clean this? It's so I'm so grateful that there aren't spiders in these stinking mangroves. Come on, camera, you can do it. Oh, dog hair. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun.